Lesson 68. Our new word for this lesson is similar to SD or esteen because this one also has a movable new. So it could be spelled AC or it could be spelled ACEN with the letter new at the end. So that's why we have the letter new in parentheses up there. It's to show you that there's a movable new at the end of this word. And just like esteen, whether the new is there or not depends upon the word that's following it. If it's the final word in a clause or if it's followed by a vowel, you'll have that new there. But if a scene is followed by a consonant, it'll be a C. And the situation you just described, Catherine, it's like that for all Greek words that have a movable new at the end, right? Right. So our readers and listeners are learning that concept here, but that's a concept that they can take with them for the rest of their career in Greek. And there will be more words with movable news, so it will be useful. Uh, as they get more advanced, they'll eventually see some nouns that have a movable new at the end. Mm -hmm. But when they do, they'll be ready because they'll already know the concept. Exactly. So again, this word, a C or a scene, is similar to SD or esteen because sometimes we'll have a sentence in which the subject of the sentence is explicitly stated, and other times the subject won't be explicitly stated. Right, and in the times when the subject is not explicitly stated, you get to fill in with they are in English because the pronoun is embedded in a scene. Exactly, and we have a couple of example sentences here that allow us to illustrate this. The first example sentence is georgoi a scene. Let's analyze that a moment. We have georgoi, which is the plural form of georgos, which means farmer. So georgoi means farmers, and then a scene means they are. Mm -hmm. So the sentence all adds up to they are farmers, when we translate this into English, we need to throw in the word they, you know, that pronoun that's included in a scene. And so the word they really is the subject of the sentence. They is the subject, R is the verb, georgoi is what we call a predicate nominative in grammatical terms. So that's an example of a sentence that does not have an explicitly stated subject. The subject is just they, and you have to throw the word they into your English translation. Right. But Catherine, what if the subject of the sentence is explicitly stated? What if there's a, a separate noun to be the subject? What do you do then? Well, then we don't use the pronoun they, we just drop it basically. And the second example sentence in the lesson is a good illustration of that because we have hoi didaska loi ac georgoi. So in this case, hoi didaskaloi is the subject of the sentence, ac is the verb, and georgoi is that predicate nominative, that word that's on the other side of the equal sign that ac represents. So hoi didaskaloi, the teachers, ac, are georgoi, farmers. So we don't say the teachers, they are farmers. That would be odd sounding in English. So we just drop the they and it becomes the teachers are farmers. Of course, if you're a beginner, you can translate AC as they are just as a learning method or a crutch to get started. Mm -hmm. You could say the teachers, they are farmers. And that would be perfectly clear, not correct English, but it would still be the meaning would be clear and expressive in English. So you could start with that and say, the teachers, they are farmers. And then once you see what the sentence is saying, you can drop out the word they and say, the teachers are farmers. Right. So there's nothing wrong with using that as a, a way to get started or get into the sentence. In fact, I think I do that at times, actually, when I'm reading a Greek text. If I see the word AC and I haven't seen a subject yet, I might mentally translate it as they are as I continue scanning around looking for a noun that might be the subject of that. So you have to just sort of 
provide yourself with a tentative kind of translation sometimes as you're reading along, you know? Definitely. Particularly as you get to more advanced Greek and the sentences get longer and more complex. Before we go on to the exercises, a quick note about movable new. Notice that in the first example, georgoiesin, the word esin has the movable new because it's the last word in its sentence. In this case, it's just a short example. In the second example, the word ac does not have the movable new because the next word starts with a consonant. In this case, the word georgoi is starting with the letter gamma, which is a consonant. So let's help our listeners work through a few exercises. And let's keep in mind that, again, the word order is not going to be the same as it would be in a corresponding English sentence. You might see, you know, the words just flipped around or in a different order than what you're used to in English. So let's take a look at number one. We have hoi didaskaloi. That means the teachers. And then the word esin means they are. And then ia troi means doctors. So the sentence all put together says the teachers, they are doctors. But we don't need to use the word they to translate a scene because we have an explicitly stated subject. The word didaskaloi is a separate noun that is the subject of the sentence. So we don't need the word they in our translation, and we can just say the teachers are doctors. And since a scene is an enclitic, it gave its accent to didaskaloi, and so didaskaloi has two accents, and acene has none. And uh, it changes the pronunciation, because now the sentence would sound like hoi didaskaloi acene. So when I pronounce that, I'm making sure that the last syllable of didaskaloi gets a nice accent on it. Right. And then one final observation, the word acene has a movable new at the end because the next word starts with a vowel, which uh, in this case is the letter iota. So number two, te lemachos kai alexandros uk esin ia troi. So te lemachos kai alexandros is together one unit. So that's all the subject. Te lemachos kai alexandros. And then Uk a scene. So uk is again not, and it's negating a scene. So Telemachus and Alexander, they are not ia troi. They are not doctors. But since there's an explicit subject, Telemachus and Alexander, we don't have to use they. So Telemachus and Alexander are not doctors. In number three, hoi philosophoi, that means. Uh, the philosophers, AC means they are, didaskaloi means teachers. So literally, the philosophers, they are teachers. But we don't need to use the word they in our translation. We can just translate AC as the English word are, and we can say the philosophers are teachers. Notice that AC does not have the movable new here because the next word starts with a consonant. In this case, the letter delta. 